Does your disconnect have built-in surge protection? Today I'm going to show you how to install the ICM 495. This is a disconnect without surge protection. This is a disconnect with surge protection. ICM 495 comes in two different models, 30 amp fused and 60 amp non-fused. I like my disconnects non-fused and I'm using the 60 amp model that is non-fused. This will protect our air conditioning system against lightning strikes. Today I'm going to show you how to install the ICM 495. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's get started. Let's take a look at this beautiful disconnect. Ooh, I like the color. Look at that beautiful disconnect. It says ICM controls. We've got a little LED up top so you know if your disconnect is working correctly because you have an LED light. And when you don't have an LED light, then you're not protected. Looks just like the other disconnect. Uh, looks like they've upgraded uh, the connecting means. And then this is the cover part. Inside, they've already got it pre-wired. So that looks great. I'm going to show you the tools you may need. And we're going to talk about what we do first before we install this disconnect. Before we install the ICM 495, we need to test and make sure we don't have any voltage coming to the disconnect. So we can use a multimeter or we can use a Testman voltage detector. This right here is a SC440 made by Fieldpiece and this is a Testman voltage detector made by Testman. So we're going to take the front cover off the disconnect. Sometimes you can actually take this cover off and then we're going to take the plug out and then we're going to take the cover out. And what we can do is we can just turn on our voltage detector and then we can go straight to the line and it looks like we have voltage right we don't have voltage over here to the load but we have voltage coming in or we can take our multimeter we can turn it to volts AC and then we can take our two leads and we can connect it to the two wires coming into the disconnect and you can see right there, we have 245 volts. So we need to turn the breaker off. Turn the breaker off, AC unit outdoor. I'm glad it's labeled 30 amp breaker. If you're unsure of the correct breaker for the outdoor unit, for your unit, your air conditioner, you can actually turn the main breaker off for your panel. Take a look, 200 amp main breaker and turn it off. All right, let's go. Now that we've shut the breaker off that leads to the air conditioning system's disconnect, now we need to check the voltage. I also found an extra wire that leads in to my disconnect, which I don't even know what this wire goes to, but this is a reason why you should hire a professional HVAC technician, HVAC contractor, or an electrician to install this disconnect for you so that you don't injure yourself or someone else. Now that we've verified we don't have power, we are going to loosen up these screws using a flathead screwdriver and take these wires out of these terminals. After we do that, we're going to loosen up these three lock nuts for these conduit fittings. This one is a half inch 90, this one's a three quarter straight, and this one is a three quarter straight. And how are we going to do that? We're going to use a flathead screwdriver and a hammer. Let's get started. Now let's loosen up all these screws. Doesn't take very long. Make sure you know which wire is coming in. This is our power wire coming into the disconnect. And these two wires are the power going out to the air conditioning system. And then you've got your ground terminals and your ground wires. Here is the wire that does nothing that comes into our disconnect. You wanna make sure you straighten everything out so that you can pull this disconnect off the wall. Now we've got our three wires separated. This one I'm going to have to put some caps on it, some wire nuts uh, to isolate those wires. And now I'm going to loosen up the three lock nuts. And the way I do this, just use a hammer and a flathead screwdriver. And once you get them loosened up, then you'll be able to take the lock nuts off. See, that's one lock nut. Set that here. 
and that was three quarter. And then this one is three quarter as well. And just unscrew that lock nut there. You gotta straighten these wires up the best you can. And sometimes you can actually, you gotta be careful not to scratch the wires. That once you get the lock nuts off, then you can straighten the wires up and you can pull that conduit fitting out of the disconnect. Make sure you follow your local code. If you need to use stranded wire, use stranded wire. If you need to use a certain type of conduit, use a certain type of conduit. For exterior applications, you may need Schedule 80 gray PVC conduit, or you may need this right here, liquid type conduit. So you may not be able to use Schedule 40. As far as the disconnect, the ICM 495 is rated for outdoor or indoor installations. So now we've got our three lock nuts off. We're going to take our conduit loose and now we can take the disconnect out. I recommend a drill with a 5 16 because I've got 5 16 screws holding that disconnect to this brick exterior wall and I've got an extension for my drill. So now all I've got to do is take one, two, three screws off, and then voila, my old disconnect is off the wall. Now we can install the new disconnect. And you wanna pay attention to the knockouts and make sure that you make the same knockout holes on your disconnect. You see, we've got several choices. We've got three knockouts on the back, we've got two knockouts on the bottom, and we've got a knockout on each side. And you can see the middle is for half inch and the outer ring is for three quarter. On the bottom, we've got one inch knockout. So we've got half inch, three quarter, and one inch on the bottom. And on the back, we've got one inch, one inch, and we got half inch and three quarter in the, in the middle. So well, we can make these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and knock this one out three quarter. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use a flat head screwdriver and a hammer. Now, we're going to take and knock the middle knockout out first. See that? And then, once we get this knocked out, then we'll mount it on the wall and knock out our other two knockouts. And I'm very glad this has been cut out properly because sometimes you have a hard time with knockouts. be able to just take and wiggle that back and forth now should come right out all right now let's go mount it all right now we slide those wires through the knockout in the back of the disconnect and then we take our lock nut and put our lock nut over the wires onto the conduit fitting and then we want to tighten it up like so, see that? Now we can mount our disconnect. So try to line up all the holes. There's one and then we've got our second. For the third screw at the very top of the disconnect, it's good to have this extension to be able to get in here to it. All right, now, before I tightened all three screws up, I wanted to make sure that all three were lined up and they were in there. And now, it's on the wall. Now, we're gonna go ahead and use our flathead screwdriver and our hammer to take out the rest of those knockouts. Straighten the wires up. Like so. Grab the half inch lock nut right here and tighten it up. All right, get those out of the way. And now let's get our three quarter knockout. If you want to take this off, you can. 
but there is a ground screw right here. So I'm gonna make sure that you leave it on if you can. All right, now that's pretty loose. So I should be able to wiggle it back and forth. And if you got some needle nose or pliers or some adjustable pliers, that may be handy for loosening this up. If you've ever played that thumb game, that's what this looks like here. <laughs> there we go. All right, now we got our last wire. And this is the one that goes from the disconnect to the outdoor unit. So this is our load right here. This is what we wire into our load, right? Line is what comes in, load is what goes out because our air conditioner is our load. Now that we have all three lock nuts hand tight, we're gonna take our flathead screwdriver. Some, some technicians like to use adjustable pliers. Sometimes you can't get in with adjustable pliers. That's pretty tight. Yeah. Tighten that up. You may need to get a plastic bushing as well. Oh, that's loosey. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Remember that. Now, we are going to disregard this wire. We don't know where this comes from and why it's in the disconnect, so I'm going to take and cap that. And then we're going to hook this wire up to the load, which is on the outside, and this wire up to the line, which is on the inside, okay? So what are we going to do first? We're going to loosen up all of our screws you may need a good pair of wire strippers this right here is klein tools this is a pair of pliers wire strippers and it's got a little crimping apart right here so if you need to make a crimp but you may need to cut the length of your wires to make them shorter that way you don't have a bunch of wire in your disconnect just makes it harder for you to work with those wires and also to maybe close that disconnect now i'm going to take the flathead screwdriver and i'm going to loosen up where the cover goes on to this disconnect right here. Also, it is recommended that you use stranded wire because I can see where if you don't tighten these up, these two wires together that go into the line terminals, um, you may pull this wire right out and that won't be good. So you need to make sure that when you tighten these up, especially where you've got those uh, two uh, line terminals, you need to make sure you pull on the, these black wires, make sure they do not come out, okay? So stranded wire is probably uh, gonna be my recommendation for wiring. Uh, see, this is stranded, okay? And this is solid. You wanna use stranded. Okay, now let's continue. I'm gonna put these in next. This is my load. This goes to my outdoor unit. Those are my two outside terminals. All right. Tighten that up. You want to be careful not to break anything, and if you over tighten it, you will. If you don't use the right size flathead screwdriver, you will. That's what happened to me on that ground terminal right there on the right. I broke that. If you can see that, I broke that. And uh, luckily, it's super tight, so I did a good job with the tightening, but I over tightened. And probably used the wrong flathead screwdriver because these. Are a little bit smaller than these all right now my last two wires are my line bada boom bada bing pull all right pull now everything's tight like it should be you just want to make sure now what I'm going to do is these two wires that are not being used inside the disconnect. Put a couple wire nuts on there. That way they're not touching anything. And then I'll probably use some rubber tape, which I don't have any with me. But rubber tape is nice. Now we got plenty of room. And we're going to take and put this cover back on see that 
Now we've got our cover and you can actually read this cover. We got some really good information on here. And then this is our uh, plug-in for our disconnect. I want you to check out the older plug-in. You can see this is the older plug-in and I like how uh, their uh, plug-in is because it looks like it's been upgraded. So this is probably gonna work a lot better. On the panel itself, you can see we've got warning labels, uh, risk of electrical shock, shock. We've got our part number and We've got um, our voltage rating and then uh, current rating. And then on the back, it tells you about the lug specifications. So wire size and torque so that you know exactly how much torque to put on each one of those screws. Definitely recommend uh, consulting this. So this is the cover. Put it in place like so. And then this is the plug-in. Now we can plug it in. Look at that. Now there's our disconnect. Turn the main breaker back on and the breaker to the air conditioner. You see the green LED, that means your air conditioner is protected with a surge protective device. Whenever you have a lightning strike, if the surge protective device goes bad in this disconnect, there's a replacement part, ICM 495 SPD. So that's nice, the fact that you don't have to replace the whole entire disconnect. You can just replace the surge protective device inside this disconnect. When you don't see that LED, that means you're not protected against lightning strikes and you may need to get that replacement part. You know if you need the 30 amp or the 60 amp, there should be a tag or a label on your air conditioner where it should have the model and serial number. It should have minimum circuit ampicity or max overcurrent protection or MOP. This says max fuse or max circuit breaker, which for this model, 30 amps. So I could have used the 30 amp model instead of the 60 amp model. If your max overcurrent protection is anything over 30, you need to use the 60. This old disconnect was around 30 or $40 for me. The new disconnect is around $100 and definitely worth the price. If you want to buy this, I've got a link down below, so you can go click that link and buy this disconnect. If you want to learn more about the disconnect and the two different models that ICM Controls offers, the 30 amp and the 60 amp, I've got a link to ICM Controls website where you can learn more about their surge protection devices. They've got a lot of different controls and surge protectors for you to keep your equipment safe from those surges or lightning strikes. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope you learned something. Definitely, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell. Ding! So you know what I'm doing. If you want to watch more reviews of ICM Controls products and other products I've reviewed that ICM Controls makes, type in my YouTube channel name, Taddy Digest, and ICM Controls on YouTube or Google, and you'll find more product reviews. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.